שלום חברים, and ברוכים הבאים. Welcome to another program of פניני התורה. My name is Rabbi Yitzhak Shapira, and I'm the host of this program where we look through the five books of Moses every week, not just to find out about the Mashiach, but find out about this majestical book that is called the Torah, and how it should be applied to our lives today. And this is a very special Torah portion, Shmot, or Exodus chapter 1, verse 1, we read about the birth of a man named Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu, who is ultimately became the giver of the Torah. And the Torah portion starts with the account of Moshe, with the word Shmot, Shmot, in Hebrew names. It says, This is the name of the children of Israel who are... Um, who are in Egypt, you know, and then they, they, they say that the new pharaoh, the new pharaoh did not know Yosef. He did not know. But I want you to pay attention to a very interesting verse. Verse 7 is a very interesting verse in chapter 1. It says, Ubne Israel and the children in Israel, Pru, Paru, Uishretsu, the word there in Hebrew, Yishretzu, the word Sheretz, talking about the multiplying, but it's a very negative word. Yishretzu, it's almost like when you use the Hebrew word, the word Yishretzu, it's talking about um, uh, lies. Cockroaches, etc., etc. There is a linguistic clue here that not only that the children of Israel grew, they also uh, departed themselves from from the God of their fathers. So they they left the God of their fathers, and in the midst of, midst of all of those things, God is bringing. Moshe Rabbeinu, we see the story of the snare, the burning bush later on, who became the redeemer of the Jewish people. He became the very first redeemer. And there is an important law, as the rabbis themselves tell us. They say, as there is the first redeemer, so will be the last redeemer. Okay? In essence, Moses' life is going to be similar to the life of the last redeemer. And that's a very important point. Now, Moshe ended up ultimately giving the children of Israel the Torah. And the Torah is the essence of, of the, the Torah and the giving of the Torah is the essence of what we're going to read here in the book of Exodus, what's happened in, uh, on Mount Sinai, etc., etc. But here is a preparation for the Torah. There is some nagging questions that I think we all have to ask about preparing to receive the Torah. I see a prophetic picture of the children of Israel here representing uh, us at some, uh, some level. They say they didn't hear God because they were from a shortness of bread, they are busy. Um, and, and that's something that I want to encourage you, not to never to be too busy for God in your personal life. We all are busy, but if we stop and, as Hashem said, be still, then we can find truly the Torah. Now, when we say the term Torah, I want to touch today on an explosive and a controversial issue. Uh, when we talk about Torah, the, it, it's a loaded term. It, it, what does it mean? Is it mean an oral Torah? It is it mean a written Torah? And this Torah portion actually is answering this particular question, okay? And I'm, I'm going to answer this with you today. What is Torah? What is the meaning of the word Torah? I would like to clarify specifically the relationship between what I call the written Torah, the Torah of Moses, and the oral Torah. Some hold the view in the Messianic movement that the oral Torah and the written Torah are contradictory, contradictory altogether and I won't say I don't be there to this. I don't believe in, believe in that at all. I do believe that the written Torah is the, almost like if you think about a seed, it's the seed that is put into the ground, okay? Uh, it's, it's the foundation. But the oral Torah is its essence represent uh, the, 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 the spring, the, the bud, the budding, the, the trunk of the tree. It is not the root, but it's a trunk. It's a representation of what's springing out of uh, the oral Torah. And I will prove to you that there is such a thing as oral Torah, just from this Torah portion today. And if there is such a thing as oral Torah, and, and we have to ask ourselves the question, how much oral Torah we should uh, follow, or more specifically, how much Torah period we should follow. 
And believe it or not, this Torah portion, this Shabbat, is answering all of those questions. Okay, you want to wonder how. I would like to take you to one verse. We're not going to go very far. We're just going to stick with one verse in the book of Shemot. We're going to read it together. In Shemot chapter 2, verse 15, we read those words. And Pharaoh heard this thing about Moses killing, killing a man. He said, He wanted to kill Moses. And Moses fled from Pharaoh, Midian, and he sit, sat in Midian, al Abair, and he sat down by the well. Now this is an important context that I would like to give you here, because here you see Moses in his humanity. Uh, the, the rabbi teach that Moses was quasi-God and quasi-man. He was both, and they said when he fled from Pharaoh, he was acting in his humanity. Now, the words that I would like you to focus here on is this idea that Moses sat down by, a man, by, by the well. There is a very famous Jewish Midrash, and in the return of the kosher pig, I, I go elaborately through the Midrash. It's in Kohelet Rabbah that draw parallel between the first Redeemer and the last Redeemer, and the entire Midrash teaches that the last Redeemer, Redeemer not only will resemble, resemble the first Redeemer, which is Moses, but it will be superior to the first Redeemer, okay? It will be absolutely superior to the first Redeemer. It says there in Kohelet Rabbah, it says, on this passage, and Kohelet Rabbah highlight three parallels between the first Redeemer and the last Redeemer to show the superiority of the last Redeemer, which is, of course, the Mashiach. Okay, and it says that this, the, one of the, the three parallels is, is derived from Exodus chapter 2, verse, verse, um, verse 15. And it says there in the Midrash, it says, uh, the, it says, on the first Redeemer, it is said, and he sat down by a well. But on the last Redeemer, but, the, but, but on the last Redeemer, it will be said that he is the source of the water which is inside the well, as it is stated, and all the brooks of Judah shall flow with waters, and the fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord, and shall, wa shall water the valley of the Shittim. Please understand that the last Redeemer, okay, the last Redeemer he, he will be superior to the first Redeemer because Moses, in essence, it says here in the Torah that Moses sat on the well. Well, what is inside the well? There is water that is inside the well. But the last Redeemer, he will ultimately be what is inside the well. And that is the water itself. That is the essence of the Torah. The essence of the Torah is the Mashiach, what is inside the well. Okay, this is very important. Now, what does it mean to us today? It's mean to us today that we, if we practice Torah, and we are focused on the one that is sitting by the well, but is not leading us to the what inside the well, we are practicing the wrong Torah. People ask this question all the time, all the time. Rabbi Shapira, am I, am I doing Torah right and practice Torah right? Here is the answer. If the Torah of Moshe is not leading you, if it's leading you just by the well, and please understand, Moses is sitting on the well. Why is he sitting on the well? Because he's the guard of the well. He is the one who is going to bring us into the into what's inside the well, which is Mashiach. So if indeed, if this is the case, then and we follow Moses correctly, he should point us to Mashiach. That's why it says in Yohanan chapter 5, if you believe Moses, you also believe me. Okay, now look with me something interesting in the book of Malachi chapter 3. This is a, 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 a chapter that, uh, that, that God 
present the, the messenger that is, will send Malach. Malach in Hebrew does not mean an angel, mean messenger. And it says there in the text, very interesting, that he's going to send this messenger. The rabbi says that the Malach that will be sent, it will be Mashiach ben Yosef. It will be appearing first in Mashiach ben Yosef here. And it says, here is the last day. So imagine Mashiach is coming to the world. And it says in the end of the book of Malachi, a very interesting verse, it says, Zichu, let's look together, he says, Zichu Torah Moshe Avdi, remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I command unto him, in all Israel, okay, Chukim, Umishpatim, the judgment, and, 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 and so forth. So, the interesting thing that is the last day, it says, remember the Torah of Moses. Why does it say in the last day, that remember the Torah of Moses? Isn't as uh, some Christian says, Mom, the Torah has been done away with? God forbid. The Torah is eternal, ladies and gentlemen. It's absolutely eternal. And, and a matter of fact, it says that we are, those who will not remember the Torah of Moses in the last days, we're going to be in the last, it will be in serious trouble. Only those who remember the Torah of Moshe, according to the scripture, will actually, will be served. So what is this term, Torah Moshe Avdi, mean? What is the essence of the Torah of Moses? The essence of the Torah of Moses is what's inside the well, as he says in Ecclesiastes Rabbah. And what is inside the well? The Mashiach. Moses to lead us to the Mashiach. So when it says he remember the Torah of Moses, he's saying, remember the essence of the Torah of Moses, which is the Mashiach, finding the Mashiach in essence. If one practice Judaism and he truly remember the Torah of Moses, he will surely find the Mashiach. Okay? If one practice the Torah of Moses, and doesn't find the Mashiach, guess what? He is not practicing the Torah of Moses. I know it sounds to you shocking, but I'm saying most of the Jewish people in the world who A, do not seek Mashiach, or B, they, they forsake the, the idea of Mashiach altogether, or find a false Mashiach, they don't practice Moses. Their Torah is not authentic. And I found it absolutely shocking. So, so many Gentiles looking at them said, oh, I want to practice Judaism just like them. No, you don't. Because their Torah does not lead a person into what inside the well. What Moses sit and God, he say, here I am, here I am, I'm here. Mashiach is here, he's inside the well. This is not my words, friend. This is the words of the rabbis. Okay? But remember that this word says it's transmitted. Remember Dorat Moshe. Well, when is the Torah of Moses was given? Recently? No, it's not given recently. It's given on Mount Sinai, thousands of years ago. How do you think the Torah was transmitted from when Moshe was on Mount Sinai to us today? Who do you think brought it down to us? It is the rabbis who have brought it down to us. That, friend, is called the oral law. The oral law is a transmission mechanism for the Torah of Moshe. And that's why the oral law, it is so important. The oral law transmitted from father to son, the father to son, the father to son, the word of Moshe Rabbeinu. Ever along the way has been uh, some things that have been mistransmitted, of course. Because it's called a game of uh, 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 broken telephone. But the one great thing about being Jewish is we know that the words that were written 2,000 years ago is the same word that is being read today. And that's including the oral law, friends. So if one, by definition, reject altogether the oral law, okay, if one rejects the entire oral law, he is rejecting the Torah of Moses, okay? However, if one rejects the essence of the Torah of Moses, he rejects by definition not just the written law, he is rejecting the oral law too. I know it sounds shocking to you, but this is true. The oral law, if one truly seeks the essence of the oral law, he will find Mashiach because the rabbi says that the essence of the Torah in Sanhedrin 99a is the Mashiach. 
It is the Mashiach. Absolutely it is the Mashiach. And how we are to transmit the Mashiach? Well, it started with Moshe. Moshe Rabbeinu in Mount Sinai passed to us, passed to us to the point that it says we have to remember it in the last days. What do we remember? We don't have a temple today. We, we cannot do two-thirds of the mitzvot of Torah. That's why nobody should be really call themselves Torah observant. It's nonsense. Two-thirds of the mitzvot we cannot even do. So what is it we remember? We remember what Moshe did. He sat upon the well. And it's Hebrew. It doesn't say set upon, set down. He says he sat on top of. Why? Because he became a flag, kind of like a flag. And he said, here it is. I am sitting on top of the well. What's inside the well is the last redeemer. That's when Deuteronomy 18, 15, he says, you are to listen to the one that is coming after me. Why? Because he's going to uh, uh, bring you into the water. What is the, that's the essence of the Torah. That's why the rabbis themselves said, and I know it will be difficult for some of you to recognize it but please understand that the Torah that you practice today if it is using the name if it is your calendar if it is whatever it is it is foolishness the rabbi said it this way Koelet Rabbi 11.8 let's read together it says the Torah that a man acquires in this world is foolishness or in Hebrew Hevel in comparison to the Torah of Mashiach. Please understand that the word here in Hebrew, the word foolishness does mean, why does it call foolishness the rabbi explained? Because it will be forgotten. Much of the way we practice our, our observance today will be forgotten and will be retaught and will be relearned when Mashiach come. Yeah, will we celebrate the feast? Yes, but I promise you, we will not celebrate the feast like we celebrate the feast right now. So what should we do? If it's all foolishness, should we just leave it be? No, we should not leave it be. In, this, in the time between now and when Mashiach comes, we should continue to adhere to the oral law the way it was passed to us with our eyes upon the well, with our eyes on Mashiach. Please, I'm talking to you, especially in the Hebrew movement and into the, in the uh, sacred name movement and all the other movements out there who reject the oral law. Please understand that if you reject the oral law, you reject Yeshua himself. Now you say, well, but the oral law rejected Yeshua too. No, they have not rejected, in essence, Yeshua. They rejected the picture of the way Yeshua was painted. Not who Yeshua really is. You have to make a distinction. The oral law, there is no problem with it. The problem is if one does not seek the well. Okay? And what is inside the well? I asked this question a minute ago. Inside the well, there is water. Right? Have you ever thought about it? The word in Hebrew, well, like, well, is having said water. Let's look at the Hebrew word, water or mime, for a second. The word mime in Hebrew is actually the prefix to the word rachamim. What is rachamim? Rachamim literally in Hebrew means mercy. Let me explain this to you, that if one truly sick Mashiach, what he's seeking is Rachamim because he's in the desert, spiritually speaking. He's dry and he's thirsty and he's needing mercy and mercy is water. Water is life. Water is also the Holy Spirit. Who is the one who's given the, the giver of the Holy Spirit? Well, Moses is the giver of the Holy Spirit and Yeshua is the one who ultimately gave the Holy Spirit to the entire world. That is exactly why he is the water. That's why Yeshua himself quoted and he says, those who are thirsty, come to me because they, he is the owner. He's not the owner of the well. He's the essence of the well. What I'm trying to tell you today, we have to seek Mashiach, but we have to seek Mashiach through the Torah of Moshe, the way he's been transmitted to us in the last 2,000 years. That's why it says in, in Gematria, let's look again, it says that the term Moshe, Moshe in Gematria equal 363, the term HaMashiach, the Messiah, okay, the Messiah is also equivalent that. Or Moshe Chai, Moses is alive. Moshe Chai, HaMashiach is the same term in Gematria. And that is important. If 
one, and that's my challenge right now for the Jewish people. If one seek Moshe, the one he really have to seek is Hamashiach. And what does it mean to seek Moshe? It to seek the well. Seek the world, not to seek tradition, not to seek culture, not to, to not, not, not to seek anything else except to the well. Moshe says, if you know me, you're going to find the well, and the well will give you mercy. It will give you the Holy Spirit. It will cleanse you. Those are all the things to do by the nature of the word maim and rachamim in Hebrew. That is the challenge to you today, my Jewish brothers and sisters who watch it. But what about the nations? There is also a great challenge to you here. Your question how much or how little Torah you practice is nonsense, and you need to stop wasting time on this particular question. The question you need to ask yourself today is my observance of Torah lead me, as Moshe Rabbeinu said, to the well? Does it lead you to the well? Does it lead you to walk in the Spirit? Does it lead you to walk in mercy toward, your, toward others and uh, recognizing God's mercy? Does it lead you to walk in compassion? Does it lead you to all of those things? If the answer is yes, I say do more Torah, learn more Torah, but understand that this Torah has been transmitted now for, for 3, 000, over 3,000 years and it will have to be remembered through the channel that is given to us. From father to son, from father to son, from father to son. And that's called the oral Torah. So don't, don't reinvent the wheel. Look for Mashiach through the oral tradition. That's what my encouragement to you. Look for the Mashiach through the oral Torah. Do not substitute Moshe for anything, though. And keep on treading through this water as you can become grafted into the Jewish people, where ultimately Mashiach will come and teach us in this last day that our Torah, you know, if it is the written Torah, the way we understood the written Torah, or the oral Torah, it's all, at the end of the days, it's foolishness because he's going to teach us all together so brother and sister let's stop arguing over those things if you've been called to graft it to the jewish people recognize it doesn't mean that the jews are right on everything they're not right of everything we realize that we're doing the best we can to fill those gaps until mashiach come and teach us all i hope it, this lesson uh, touched some hearts and may the Lord bless you with Shabbat Shalom from this uh, lesson here about the true Lord of mercy, the true Maim Chaim, Yeshua Mashiach, Litraot Kol Tuf.